Good morning, everybody. Pastor Rick here, Broadman Baptist Church. This is the Broadman Word for um, October 7th, Monday, October 7th, 2024. We're going to talk about um, unity of the Spirit. Uh, this is from Ephesians 4. I'll just read you a little bit. And it's under unity and maturity in the body of Christ. This is um, this Apostle Paul writing, of course. Is As a prisoner for the Lord, then... I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. So this relationship that we're supposed to have is quite the thing. Um, we are to live in Christ Jesus, and um, it is the Lord that is in all, through all, by all, uh, over all, uh, and actually in all. And that means you, that means the Spirit of Jesus Christ is in you as a believer. Uh, you are living in Christ Jesus. It's a very critical thing because it doesn't say that we're supposed to be by him, with him, around him, uh, near him. Uh, it says that we're supposed to be in him, he in us. And that's a very different relationship. Our walk is not a walk that is separate um, from our person. Our person is our walk and our walk must be in Christ Jesus. So. In this exhortation from Paul, we are to be humble and kind and patient um, and all the other things that you would think, yeah, sure, that, that sounds like what um, Jesus taught us and what Christianity is. Uh, but it says that we're to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. So not only are you intertwined, you are abiding in Christ Jesus. You are actually alive in Christ Jesus. It says that you've been called. By who? Well, God. You've been called by God to be part of his kingdom, to be part of his kingdom here on earth. And that's why you have um, what you have, the gifts that you have, uh, the provisions and things of your life. Uh, they are all designed to allow you to survive here um, but not as the as this earthly kingdom, but part of God's supernatural um, heaven bound kingdom. And we are to gather folks with us and bring them into the kingdom or at least show them the way to the kingdom. Then let God put the call on their heart. And so what it is for us then to think about is that we are supposed to keep ourselves then very tightly together and it's difficult with all the ideologies of the day there's never been so much information to any people at any time in human history it doesn't mean knowledge or wisdom well it might mean knowledge because we know things uh, it doesn't mean wisdom um, and knowledge you know we're, we'll call that a coin toss as to how much we actually know um, but the basis still stays the same. Um, there is the deception and lies of those who want to live worldly lives and to have their own self-determined um, ways of thinking and that can change throughout their entire life. Um, they can switch back and forth to this idea, this, this either idea, and um, it's all very cultural and temporal and um, has to do with the times and, you know, um, all the things um, that you would think of uh, a modern life would have. All the things, I'm sorry, we had a little technical issue there. All the things that you would think of a modern life would have. Well, um, then there's the truth, which never changes. Um, that's why it's expressed here that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and one Father of all, who's in all, through all, and over all. Uh, that is you. That's us. 
we are not uh, subject to the times, so to speak, the times of the day in which we live. All this mass of information is just that to us. It's just information. We've already been given everything that we need to know in the expressed will, the word, the living word of um, God and the teachings of Jesus Christ. And so moving forward from that place and not diverting from that place, not allowing the schemes of the world, the deceivers, those who reject God and want to do their own thing, uh, when we don't do that, and then unity, unity of the spirit, um, unity of the church, the body of Christ, uh, becomes normal. Uh, right now, the society wants to pull at you with all kinds of um, distractions and deceptions. Uh, but as Paul said, for us to remain spiritually mature, to grow in Christ and to move the kingdom forward, there is unity and uh, it is necessary and we have to think of ourselves not as free agents but as part of the body of Christ, part of the army that God has put together to be here to evangelize if you think about it. Um, there is no second wave of humanity on the way. There's no other people going to come and finally do the Lord's work, finally evangelize the world um, that's not going to happen. There's us and we're it. We're either going to do it or not do it. And so we then have to, to have any sort of hope of success, certainly the kind of success that God intends for us to have, we have to be united in spirit, which means we have to have a biblical worldview. How you think about things what you think about things, the way you think life should go, the general rights and wrongs, the goods, the bads, the how to treat people, the how you espouse yourself, what you stand for, your identity is all tied up in this walk that God gave you and put you on a mission from God with the rest of the church. You are a piece of the puzzle you are one of his priests in the royal priesthood. You are one of the ambassadors of the gospel. You're one of his soldiers on the battlefield and on and on and on and on. Many descriptions of uh, you're a saint. Many descriptions uh, for the believing Christian. And it is in that where you find your identity. That is what you show the world. That is how you profess life to be uh, from a unified biblical worldview and it's difficult particularly in these times of political upset we got an election coming yada yada right and there's all kinds of people all kinds of ideas out there all kinds of things trying to tell you what's true what's not true and how to live and who's going to be the savior of the nation well i'll tell you who's going to be the savior in the nation it's going to be god um, no politician is going to be able to do that so following any particular politician is a waste of time. Um, we do need to be involved. We do need to vote. We do need to vote biblic biblically minded. And in that, demonstrate the one God, one spirit, one Lord in all through all concept. So listen, brothers and sisters, I want you to um, take this and think about it. Think about, are you treating your Christianity as something separate? Or are you truly identifying as being in Christ Jesus? It's critical. Because if you haven't made the leap over to not being just somebody who goes to church, somebody who believes in God, but to actually have a biblical worldview and to consider yourself abiding in, entwined in, actually living in Christ Jesus, then there's work to do. Um, you, you need to reevaluate your thought process there and come truly over to the side of the light uh, where there is a hope in heaven and there is the strength and the resources to move through this life how God intended you to and not how anybody else says to. Listen, brothers and sisters, I love you. I hope you have a marvelous day in the Lord. I'll talk to you next time.